Welcome back to the Winds of the Reboot. Uh, this episode is really special to me. We're going to talk to Chris from Empire Toy Works, the owner operator of Rock Gut. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about Amrak. And then at the end of the video, I wanted to do this because um, his work inspires me to do crazy stuff like this. So this is a Ford Raptor that I got from Walmart. I think it was like under 14, 20 bucks a roundabout. Came with the trailer and uh, had a four wheeler and stuff like that. I actually used a four wheeler when I did the Cara Dune three and three quarter. So we're gonna be talking three and three quarter today. Save 3.75, 118. Let's try to save the lines. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about acid rain. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because this is a long video. Like I said, I'm gonna fanboy out a little bit because he's such a big inspiration to the stuff that I'm doing in my little world, my Amrak spot back there. You can see the lights way back there. So once that gets more complete, I'll start doing more shots inside of there. I had to move it from the old reboot, which was in the garage, into the house. Make sure you guys check out everything that he does. I'll leave it all down in the description. Thank you, thank you, and thank you to Chris for stopping by. And you know, maybe uh, we'll do something every month with me, Warrior Girl of Customs, and Chris from Empire Toy Works. Stick around, check it out. It's gonna be a long one, but it's well worth it. Thanks. It was your quote, but you said, in a world that you you can't control or you're not happy with, make your own is something to that effect. Yeah, I mean, and it's just something that kind of has always been in my head. Like, you know, whatever's going on, even if it's personal stuff or whatever that you go, and I don't really have any kind of crazy personal stuff going on, but it's just neat being able to have full control over something that you're creating. You're, you're the god of it. If you want to have some kind of political upheaval, then go for it. You know, <laughs> if you want to have some sort of, you know, uh, poor against rich type thing, go go for that. You know, this is something that you can control both aspects of it. You know, so that's the great yeah. thing about it. I. But what are your uh, sure. like favorite lines right now, as far as like doing customs and like acid rain or? Yeah, acid rain is probably my top favorite, and even if it's not necessarily sci-fi. It's just yep. the fact that it, it's artist driven. Uh, Kit Lau, who, who was the creator of the Acid Rain, he's an artist. And uh, he had done like um, Japanese pop up or, or Chinese pop up books and um, am amazing stuff in the past. And, uh, you know, this line popped up one day uh, Acid Rain. I had seen like little picture, pictures of it. And I, was, I love the articulation. These guys just had this like just natural uh, 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 swagger to them, you know? They, 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 yes. The, the being able to to kind of get the shoulders down, the, the hips turned just the right way. And it didn't look like they were trying to do some kind of dynamic pose. These guys looked like they were haggard. Like they, they, they'd been to war. They're just walking off to the next battle, you know, and they just had this emotional, uh, uh, amazing emotional uh, stance to them, you know. And, and uh, like, and even I, with the, like the head articulation gives it a lot too, of, emo yeah. like it's a like lot a of emoting. Yeah. 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 So, uh, I had ordered some and I was still like really into like the modern Joes at that time. E even like the, the classic O-ring Joes, I, I, I really loved them. And, yeah. uh, and I, and I had a stack of these acid rain just sitting off to the side. I, I never even like, I looked at them and I closed them back up and they looked beautiful. I never really bothered <laughs> to, to really mess with them. And uh, one day I was like, I need some better shots. I had these play sets. I really wanted some like just real uh, amazing poses with them. And the GI Joes, you know, they're, they're amazing, but, they're still stiff, you know, in, in that, yeah. that, you know, um, the, the, the type of articulation they have, is, even though it's beyond what we had, like in the past, it still didn't have this like amazing ability to really crunch stuff down, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and I opened no, like, up the acid rain and it just, it blew me away from there on. Just standing, they look like they have just so much, yeah. you know, if you, like it, just and standing if, up against the wall. If you take the time to really put the weight of the figure to make it look like, like what a person would look like, Right, you know, it, it, where their their <laughs> hips and their their shoulders and all of that kind of stuff it come into play, it looks like they have a weight to them, and uh, and, and yeah, I, it just blew me away. And then a bit, I mean, I I had collected them for so long, and then I started using them in so many pictures, and then I noticed Kit Lau himself started liking them, oh, liking no my way. photos, and I was like, no way, this is amazing, you know. <laughs> and then he started writing me, you know, and then we we're like we're talking back and forth, you know, and he loves my stuff because I'm not just like regurgitating the same you know acid rain world. I'm taking yep. them and showing what people that if you're, if you're like diehard GI Joe or, or star Wars or any stuff, um, any kind of multiverse type thing, you can take the acid rain and, and mix them up a little bit and That's turn them doing. into a character for your world. Yeah. I did that with Fox. Yeah. 
Um, and all I had oh, yeah. was this animated fox head, and they don't really have a that figure for great. him. So I just peeled the parts off, and uh, yeah, thank you. I swapped them. I did the same yeah. for Rex. They're animated heads, but I mean, they can still be a lot of fun. You know? Oh, totally. I love they it. Work, they work so, because this armor, there's no rubbing, so you're not going to have any paint rub. Right. Because of how acid rain is, like there's no paint rub, and the articulation is by far it's better than it, one twelve. There's there's a bit of um a lot of engineering into the. It's not just like getting this human form and having it so it can do certain things. They actually put this this amazing ability to really kind of rotate and roll around different yeah. parts of the body, you know. And even and it, now they they've progressed even further where they have oh like a double socketed ball jointed <laughs> you know shoulder, and you can like pull the, the 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 shoulders back and forward, you know, so you can really kind of hunker down with these different poses. Yeah, and, and you can just pop pop the socket off and then put on a new arm you know that that's one great thing you can really completely break them down so yeah. it, it's great even if you have a handful of them you have a handful of different characters now that you can just mix and match or put them all back to their, their factory standard the way they were and that i pretty much stick with customs for mine i know my friend josh he does he has the whole he had to have the whole buck team he's like i gotta have the buck team and then i'll do customs right. so he yeah, tracked them we, down yeah he's he tracked them all down and uh just even their like robots and stuff. They're uh, yeah. not robots. What's the word I'm looking for? They're uh, oh man, they're mecha. They're mecha stuff. So like right. that stuff is right. really cool. Like the laurel, I think it's called. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Then the there's tons I of have. different yeah. laurels and um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and then the, the transforming tank, the stronghold. Oh. Uh, that was another one, and it's just the, the design of it. It looks beautiful in both forms, and that's what I think is amazing. You know, with it is that it it, it just it reminds me a lot of like some of the old school anime, and um, yeah. like I, I'm a huge fan of Gray Digital Target. It was a, it was a manga, and then it was also the anime that they had, and uh, some of the the designs in that where it went from stuff that was like gritty, almost like Mad Max, and then <laughs> in the same storyline, it went to something that was beautiful and sleek. You know, so yeah. it was like these different warring factions that they they had to kind of level up each battle. You leveled up to a different uh, enemy, and those enemies got better and better, and and their tech was more advanced. So you're sitting there with like this rusty old machine <laughs> gun, you know, in this beat up you know jeep, and then they have something that looks like like uh, a mix of Gundam and Wally, that yeah, comes in, you know, <laughs> floating over the ridge, and it's like, what the hell? They got lasers and shit. You know, you don't know what, what what's going to happen. But I, I love that that anime. And a lot of your stuff that you do comes from what you've remembered or the books. Like you were going over all of oh, yeah, your yeah. books that you read that, yeah. that you put in. So like that's part of it too. Definitely. I'm assuming like everything just kind of rolls together. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of um, of concept art. You know, so I, yes. you know, everybody, they love the finished art, but I love seeing those stages of what didn't get chosen and where the artist was kind of imagining. So you really get in the head of the artist and see – okay, this is what he was visualizing. And one, th one thing that always struck out at me um, was the, the original design for Darth Maul. When the artist drew him, and I want to say it was Ian McKaig, I'm not sure, but when he originally drew him, he was actually a guy that looked about the same with the red you know, painted face and all. But what they thought were horns was actually feathers that were like barbed wire around his head. Oh, so when they saw wow. the drawing, they were like, I love the horns. He goes, those aren't horns. Those are feathers that are, he, he's, he's wound around his head in like <laughs> oh, just little God. bits and pieces. So it, he, he thought of something almost more nightmarish. Instead of being attacked by a guy with horns, a horned head, imagine a guy that's taken like wire and wrapped feathers and stuff around his head. Yeah, that's and so like, brutal. This guy's, this guy's insane, you know? So it, <laughs> it, there, there's a bit more there's a, a bit of alternate dimensions kind of going on with with a lot of the uh concept art of you know star wars or star trek or whatever it may be and i love just seeing those designs of what could have been you know and i think like you bring some of that stuff out like through your you know through all of your stuff right. that you're doing it's and a, that's yeah. why I, like any of my play sets like with rock I, I i never wanted to try to replicate a scene uh, like a direct movie scene or something that was from a movie or, or a TV show. A lot of guys do. And, and that's, I think that's amazing. I don't have the yep. personal, I, I don't have the restraint to pull me away from doing something crazy, you know, with that or something yeah. that, that doesn't <laughs> exist on screen. You know, I, 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 I have to do something a little bit different and I don't want to regurgitate the same scenes. I'd love to see like Luke and Chewie, Chewie and Han in a place that we've never seen them before. 
yeah. instead of like in the in the tunnels of Hoth or 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 something else that we've seen. Okay, that looks great, but we we we've seen that scene a thousand thousand times. I want to see them on some other planet that we haven't seen them, you know, visit before, have adventures on. Or they're like sitting next to a porta potty in Raga. You know what I mean? Like in a, yeah, in a firefight. Yeah. You know, like you know that toilets exist, you know. And <laughs> right. That's why with, the, with the Mandalorian, I was glad they finally showed a toilet, you know, and I thought that was amazing. <laughs> The only thing I dislike is that I can't make my my world, my spot, whatever you want to call it. See, in my head, it's on the same belt with Ratga, like their neighboring planets yeah, and such. Yeah. So, but I cannot figure out how to make it to where my figures can go from one end of the world to the other end without there being some type of elevator. So that yeah. part blows me away. Like, well, that's that's why with with Ratga, it you know, it's just that one central. It, where it started out as just that one central main complex in the middle. Yeah. And then later on, I added the walls, and I'm like, if I'm going to walk around this thing, I don't want to be ducking underneath catwalks and bridges. <laughs> so, like, what am I going to do? And then that's when I figured a part of the storyline was that there was like just this. Um, there's there's a whole hive of taxis that they're just constantly going from one side to the next. So which are for sale right money. now, right? There's still yeah, some. Yeah, I, I have uh, some on there. Like yeah, one or two left on eBay. So right, those speeders. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I figure they, for me, and, it makes sense. You know, if you want to get to one part quick. of the city, yeah. And it's like it's like let's say if you want to go visit New York, you have to take the bridge or whatever. No, there's no bridges. Sorry, you know, you've got to take this this hover taxi if you want to get to the city <laughs> and go back home or whatever. That's what you got to do. You got to pay it. You know, so th- yeah. th- that 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 was part of the storyline. So I think a lot of times. If you take the time, even while you're, you're building it in the, in the process of building a, a city, if you, you kind of start thinking the storylines, and even if something uh, kind of gives you a little bit of a, of a, of, of a kind of rock in, the, in like you don't know how to get around it, think of something that would allow you to, to get around that, that mental you know, lo- lo- rock that you have there. Like, what, what can I explain? Why is that wall there? Why, is, why do I have a doorknob there in my room? What, what can that be? You know, so there, there's different things that I think storyline wise that can make you create more to build around something. Yeah, and everything in yours is all pretty much wood and resin, right? There's no foam yeah. at all. Yeah, I'd say it's, it's pretty much about 98% all wood and then the rest is uh, maybe 99%. It's all wood. And then the rest, all the little greebly bits and detail parts are, are like the cast resin that I started like or, adding over the years. I think I've noticed, is it the storm tro- the sand trooper backpack? Do you use that for some of your yeah, uh, it was cast? A, for I like, think it was a, um, a, a, was it a snow trooper? It might've been a snow trooper backpack that I found that I had. A that's, all, that's all we do is sit there and try to break down what you've put yeah. on. Like literally we'll take the photo and be like, all right, so he used... I think yeah. that's this. That's a shoelace. He made it look like wire. Like these things that, like, I'm pretty creative. But when I look at your stuff, I'm like, that's. I'm like, I just nod my hat. Like, that's good. Yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna use that. I might use that. And then, like, I have all these things saved in my phone from your page. I'm like, if I could do that, maybe this. But I still want to put my own spin on it because I don't want it to be just another version of your thing. The hell, so, they, but, they can share technology. I mean, if they're bridged, that's you why. Know, in some yeah. Way, you know, there, there's a there's a, a they got the same hub where yeah, yeah they got the same vending machines. Gut, to, you yeah, know, <laughs> yeah, you know. So if they're being produced at Rock Gut, you know, they're gonna be they're gonna be you know selling them in other parts this of the galaxy too. somewhere. This thing was fun. Yeah. I made a little I made a little yeah, driver for it. That's yeah, great. things. I did uh, it did get blown up a little bit outside with some pyro, but it is yeah. still solid. Now, that makes, still that makes it look even cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. but yeah that's definitely part it's gonna be implemented also and yeah i did like a because in my world in the amrex spot i uh took and made the shore troopers like the military i guess you would call yeah. it so yeah. i just did crazy just different versions of like shore troopers with acid oh, rain yeah and, he's great i love yeah, that just i love the blue on the tree yeah yeah and then i did i want to make like the captains and all that stuff and then I even brought out, like, if Kylo were still alive, he could live. Right. And be, oh, like, their great. captain. So just, like, that's weird great. stuff like that. And then uh, there's one other one that I wanted to show you that you might like with First Order, Shore Trooper. Oh, so yeah. I just did a little bit of sculpt on the helmet. And, oh, that's, that's great. But I love these colors, man. I just want it to be part of, like, this world. Like, maybe right. there might be other sorts of the military, but, like, the main military – I'm thinking like it's a planet where they defend 
and like help so like nothing bad can get to like right. any of the Star Wars planets or whatever world, you know? Right. Like that's like and anybody that's can come through. <laughs> like, and, and that's the thing when I think guys are getting into dioramas, they, uh, when I mentioned it before, how they feel like they have to replicate exactly what they see on, on screen. Uh, they have to replicate the rankings. They have to replicate the, the characters' backstories and all that kind of stuff. And that's why I try to show with Raka, it can be whatever you want. You know, it's it's not like you have the rights to any of these franchises anyway. Right. This is all you. So right. you could just go nuts with it. You know, come up with your own military. It can be a mishmash of, of First Order. It could be a mishmash of, of, of Cobra. You know, it can be anything yeah. you want. This is your world. This is your storyline. This is your chance to to create what you want to with what you have on hand, you know. And, and that's it, why if you get if sense. you get new troopers, you know, th there's your there, there's a way that they have an upgraded armor, you know. Th there's yeah. ways that you can create your own storyline with it and you don't have to follow the, the George Lucas Lucas guidebook, you know, and, and nope, you can't do that, you know. It doesn't have to be like that. It it can be whatever you want it to be. Yeah, and it's okay. And for everyone who comments and like always hates on every time I do something, well, everything I do is usually outside of the norm. And right. I always get so many like, well, it's not supposed to be like that. And I'm like, it's okay. It can yeah. be. <laughs> like, some, some guy, I know. And I, I get it sometimes too. And I, I don't care. It just, yeah. <laughs> most people get it that I'm just having fun with the toys. And that's what I'm trying to show is that you don't have to take them, take the box and stick it and hermetically have it sealed, you know, on the wall. You picked it up at Walmart. I mean, Jesus, it, you know, it, <laughs> it just open the thing up, have fun with it, blow, take an arm off, put, pop on like a robot arm. You know, just have fun with it, and that's why I think super okay with that. With blowing stuff up and having fun, like yeah, <laughs> you can make some amazing <laughs> art with a little bit of pyro, a little bit of smoke, a little yeah. bit of effects. Whatever you do, you know, right. you can make a story out of a, like one photo, and that's, absolutely, that's like that's what I want. Like I want one eighteen never to go away, and I think like the third party, like um, oh, what is it, Animal Kingdom? He makes some good yeah. stuff, Spiro Toys. He makes yep. some good stuff. Like, And his stuff is getting evolving each time he puts out a new wave. So Yeah, I did the, uh, the the first uh, Kickstarter that they had done. So that way I was able to get one of each of those. And yeah. um, and then I placed an order for some of the other new ones, like the the, the green bog guy that they had. I love that color that he had uh, released. And then, um, and then he had sent me some also. So that's the great thing when you start – really getting into this stuff and, and showing off, you know, uh, uh, toy photography and the, the makers of these lines take notice, you know, and they're like, Hey, we really want you to like show some of these guys and they send them to me. It, it's the most amazing feeling, you know, because they yeah. understand what you're doing and that you're not boxing yourself in and that it's okay to have these guys mixed with these guys and, and they can all shake hands, you know, yeah. and it looks great because there's so many people that ask me, on a daily basis, whenever I do an acid rain, uh, you know, uh, style uh, photo, and they'll say, "Hey, where did those where did those figures come from?" You know, because they can't ID ID them. They they, don't, they right. can't understand what they are. And I'm like, "Dude, it's acid rain. You've got to check them out. You know, check out Big Bad Toy Store. Check out you know their site, the, the PIA Club. Um, you know, check out Acid Rain because you don't know what you can turn these things into. You know, it's, it's yeah. They have um, a lot of new stuff coming too. Tons of new stuff and. Yeah, and I like I like using their bodies because they have, like you said, just the way that their bodies are. Spiro toys, I like this like, animal stuff. And I took, right. uh, I actually read the the actual story, and I took the main character and uh, repainted him all up too. So, right, and he, um, and I'm I'm sure you're probably part of it. He's reaching out to like a couple people. I'm sure you're part of it to do the deluxe stuff. We're gonna kind of promote it and stuff like that. Right, and we reached out to a couple people, so that's going to be fun when the deluxe stuff hits and you know, we yeah, can that, all talk about that. And, and, and sometimes crazy. these guys will, they will contact me or, or they'll, they'll ask me, you know, to, uh, they'll commission me to do some, something that's going to be a promotional piece for whatever yeah. they're doing, you know, and if I can work it out, then a lot of times I'll try to make it so that it, it does blend in fairly well with what they're doing. And if I can put my spin on it so that I can create it in a way that it can be used for multiple toy lines, then that makes it even better that yeah. it can be used for, you know, Terminator. It can use for uh, fallout or, or star Wars or GI Joe or any of that stuff. <clears throat> it, it just works out really well. 
and the the Fortnite stuff isn't bad either. I've been using a no, couple of their bodies. No, it's not my my son. He he played Fortnite for a good while. I think he, he off and on he'll play it, but um, he picked up a bunch of figures, and and I've got given them to him, you know, as gifts and stuff. And uh, and I'll pick him up, and I'll be like, okay, I can I might be able to do something with this one, you know. I just make sure he's not looking. I'll you know go to swipe <laughs> something, but but yeah, I mean it, it it the the articulation in those also for being the type of toys that they are like off the shelf at Walmart type of thing. Yeah. I was really pleasantly surprised with the, with the way that they designed them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not bad, you know, with, they're, with accessories that some of them you can like their guns are okay. Right. Their, their guns work out pretty well. And I, um, and I've always been a sucker for any toy line that has like separate accessory packs. Oh, I think yeah. that's the most amazing thing. And I, I loved it when Hasbro did it with GI Joe and they'd have the battle packs that they did where it was just the, the blister card with all of the different backpacks and the guns and different things like that. And I thought it was just the neatest way to have like a little armory that you can stock up different things, you know? So I always thought that yeah. was so cool to have accessories. Especially at like a $10 price point, you can get right. tons of guns and stuff and like right. backpacks and whatever you yeah. need. Yeah. That's why I like, I definitely like that. Uh, some of their vehicles look pretty cool. I haven't got any yet, but they could I could see where they could be repainted, reworked, easily manipulated. Easily. Just yeah, and I think oh, yeah, you yeah. did the um, the RV thing, and then like they came out with like a bus, and I'm like, man, that's pretty close to like the same like that's yeah, because that, that's the thing. When I did the RV, and I've, I've got it over here. Which, by the way, you don't hide any of these secrets. When people ask you, you're like, this is what I did. This is what I yeah, got. Yeah, because I figured you know it, if they can do the same thing and and put their it. spin on it, you know <laughs> yeah. why not? You know that that because I. That's I so never cool. thought about doing the whole RV thing, like Spaceballs inspired. And this, I, I, you know, I love uh, Mandalorian. And I was like, you know, I'd love to do something where you take Spaceballs and Mandalorian and make something that's sort of like a razor crest between those two, like the Eagle one and, and the um, and the razor crest. And, and that's when I started looking at this on uh, online. I saw this, this RV and I was like, I think I might be able to make this work. What is it from, like, something sports shop or something? I remember you posted it up. Yeah, well, there's two. There's two. Because <laughs> what I started doing was, like, doing all this research looking for 118th capable RVs or campers. Uh, anything Which isn't like that. easy. It's not an easy No, it's not. There's task. very few. <laughs> yeah. And from what I found out, this particular RV, which I've got – hold on, right there. I've got one just like it that I bought as a backup. And it's by Dickie Toys. No way. So, yeah. So, this was the original. Oh, okay. And when I looked online, I was like, wait a second. There's a lot of G.I. Joe guys that are buying this thing up. Because there's some videos on YouTube of guys, G.I. Joe collectors, that were showing, like, hey, we wanted, like, more real-world vehicles. And something like the Joes can can get in on the weekend and then get into some kind of adventure, you know. So, they were showing this um, – they had some videos showing that this is 118th capable. You know, you could fit 118 guys in there, GI Joes, and it works really great. And it gives you access to, you know, the interior and, and all that. And uh, and I was like, wait a second, you know, I might be able to to put something here together with this stuff. So I ordered one, and my kid had the um, the the core uh, beast bomb bomber or something like that. I think it was. It was uh, Walmart had it. It was like a, a big bomber uh, jet plane that they had yeah uh, okay it, it was like was it elite force yeah i think that Something, was it okay think that yeah was it. yeah yeah and i okay. i picked it up like one year uh and maybe it was christmas after christmas it was like maybe 15 20 bucks and we had it and he played with it you know with the, the gi joes and all that kind of stuff it worked really well but it, it's a it's got a pretty big wingspan on it yeah so i started looking at it and i was like you know the jets on this thing the the wing jets they look pretty close to like what they use on the razor crest you know pretty 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 close to the design of it and it had this you know neat detailing on the surface so I, I figured you know if i cut off the rest of the wing and then just smooth it out and just use this back this portion that actually mounted up to the body of the jet um i think i might be able to make this work so then i just took it glued the the, the wings onto the rv and realized hey this thing holds you know it, it's gonna work and um and then I just painted the whole thing, you know, this white or, or painted the wings actually to match the body of it. And um, it turned out amazing, man. It's yeah, this just, is my, this is honestly my favorite vehicle that I've, I've I, made. And <laughs> I love it. I absolutely I think love it. it flipped. I think it flipped the world. Aside. Like for 118 world, everybody's like, holy shit. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, that's... and that's the thing. I love <laughs> finding toys that everybody didn't think anything of. 
they completely ignored them and yep. they're just like whatever it's a piece of crap you know it's 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 a redneck toy or something an rv or, or they have a camper or something and and they don't think anything of it to be able to use it in some other way and they just sit on the shelves at walmart it goes on clearance it's it's blown out you know people are, are selling them for pennies essentially on ebay nobody thought about it and then i discover these things and be like wait a second if i do this or this to it now everybody really wants this that they can they didn't see it in that light you know for that and I don't know if you know how big or crazy the people who follow you are, but when you did the, uh, it was like the Discovery Channel, like wetsuit or diving suit. Oh, yeah. 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 I've, got, you, uh, I've got him you, over there. Yeah. yeah. After you did that, you couldn't find it under like 50, 60 really? bucks anywhere. I swear. Everybody's like, where is that? Where do you get it? And then it just went, yeah. everything. You couldn't find it. And I was like, no way, man. Just from that one like i think you did like one one to four photos of it and it was yeah you couldn't, you couldn't he, get um, it yeah because that was another toy i got my kids when they were younger because it was basically like uh bath toys it was they're toys that they're built really well you can stick them in the bathtub um yeah. kids can do underwater with them and i had painted this maybe maybe 12 13 14 years ago and I just had it like in a, in a display shelf downstairs. And I was like, well, you know, I, I didn't have any ideas for a, a toy photo one day. And I, I was thought like, it you was know. newer because everyone was trying no, to get the this newer one. It's fairly old. <clears throat> There's one that is. came out this year or 2019 they keep, that. They keep rehashing it. Yeah. So yeah. That's a good thing. I think originally yeah. it was, um, this was white originally. And um, I think they re-released them maybe in yellow, I think. And maybe some other, like orange or something like that. I think they had them in different colors. But the great thing about it is that you can literally take the whole thing apart. It just splits in half, and um, it's easy to to spray paint. You know, it's yeah. you just you can um, you can remove the windshield in, inside of it, the glass, so that makes it you don't have to worry about masking off anything. And okay. um, so it's an easy custom, you know, for what it is. Yeah, I think that was that one. Yeah, but definitely that, but that was the uh, <laughs> and I just thought it would be neat to have like some kind of like deep space scrapper type that, salvaging uh, suit you know that inspired me to do i just took a buzz light year oh uh, yeah like yeah. at a flea market and i just made him like a mech for the short I, love it. And I was just like i could do like the uh acid rain because it has like that gritty type right stuff like feel and, to it and that's and that's my favorite thing is to take any type of action figure the cleaner the better and dirty the hell out of it yeah, because it just takes on a whole new light, especially if you can if you can bring out all the sculpting that kind of got lost, you know, in, either in the paintwork or just you know it, it's a washed out color. Like let's say it's like the the stormtroopers, and it, they're practically just all white. And it, there's a lot of detail that's hiding in there. And if you're um, able to gritty it up and just leave some of that grit and grime along the edges and contours, you start realizing, whoa, these things look amazing if they're just a little bit dirty, you know, and, and um, it's, it's something that I pretty much weather just about everything I do. Just, even yeah. if it's just a light, just light a wash. Weathering. Yeah. Just that's a small, all you need. Yeah. That's, and it I just, do that with everything too. It's, it just and it makes it out. look not so much like a, a plastic toy, you know, it, it, it dulls the color, it dulls the shine and, um, and you, you have something that looks a little bit richer, you know, this, especially with have the contours used, of the surface. Have you used any of the uh, Tamiya powders at all yet? The weathering powders? No. Well, I've they got... They come in like a little palette? Yeah, I've seen them before. Basically, it's like a uh, makeup for your makeup. models, essentially. Yeah. 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 And, Those um, work really well for um, like small areas and stuff. Like, they work right. really well. They do rub off, but if you hit them with like a matte spray, that's the only thing right. I found that would keep them on is yeah. like aerosol. I just stand far back when I use aerosol for matte. Like, any and I've got aerosol. some... Um, casting powders that i use that are okay. it's mica mica powders and it's, it's super super fine you know yeah that's like and, the red like or not red but like the almost like rust red color that you have like you just put it on very it's very lightly done it's not yeah. overbearing and, and if it's, it's too much you can, you can wipe it off and then start over or just let it settle into all the little nooks yeah yeah no this thing this this is solid like when i i thought it was gonna be it's heavy like the cheap transports and i got it and i was like yeah, this is uh, yeah, this is some good, this is quality. This is going nowhere. <laughs> like, yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, did you get any of these little things at Target? The little droids? I haven't picked them up yet. No, uh, -uh not those. There's, I've seen them online. Every everybody keeps posting them, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably end up getting a, a batch of them. 
Yeah, I said for ten bucks for two droids, that's a pretty good deal. You that's know? not and bad. I'll probably yeah. repay them all because I want to do like a droid shop. I don't know if you have one, and you're in Raga, but I want to do like yeah. a droid shop. Oh, you do? Yeah, okay. I do. Awesome. Yeah. Let me see if I can show you with this. <laughs> oh, we're going into Raga. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. That's yes, the dude, like the way you leave your stuff open, but there's still walls is crazy to me. Like I can't figure out like exactly how to do that. But you have a you have a 360 around rocket. I have like a corner, so it's yeah. a little bit different. But the way that you can see through your buildings and different stores and stuff is just like it makes a huge difference. As far as like yeah, photography I mean, wise, because with rock gut, you know, same thing. You know, I've got the corner that's over here. Yeah, and it's just it's just you know where the walls meet up at. That's so crazy. It's so big, but yeah. man. <laughs> but yeah, it's I mean, it's just using the amount of space that I had, and then you know realizing that once once I built you know the actual center area that. Um, that I needed to do something on the walls. I didn't want it to be just be like storage around the walls. And, and uh, that's when I realized, okay, I can just go ahead and do the same thing I did for, you know, here all along and up the walls. Is that the Millennium, like the big boy Millennium Falcon? Like the big, Yeah, this is the one that big... just came out. Yeah, the, um, yeah, oh, that wow. one is, yeah, because here's a, uh, that's an astromech. Oh, man. It's as long as your torso, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, like thirty. Man. I think it's like thirty-two inches, something like that, in length. Um, there. So, as you were saying, we were talking about Millennium Falcon. Now you yeah. just painted it. Yeah, you just did a wash on it, though. Yeah. Well, um, I think I did because normally I don't do like the the light washes that they always kind of recommend, uh, where you yeah. you know you want to thin it down. Basically, it's more water than paint. I usually yeah. just um, take a cup of paint. Um, I don't even use the good stuff. I use like Apple Barrel, you know, for That's, a lot of it. it. I use Decor Apple Barrel for most yeah. of my weathering stuff. Yeah, yeah. and and the yeah. the chalk paint. It's a little bit more expensive, but chalk paints, uh, acrylic chalk paint. Those are great too because they're they're super uh, super matte with them, and they give you a little bit more of a grittier appearance. A lot of yeah. times too, they dry super fast. Yeah, I use um, for figures and stuff. I use Tamiya. It's I found like. It works really well with acid rain. Like it yeah. takes really well. Um, right. Then I use every acrylic. It doesn't. People are like, what do you use? I'm like, I, everything. Like, here's what I use on this one. And I'll list yeah. like it, five different brands. And I'll and I'll even start like a video. I'll be like, here's Decor or Apple Barrel, and we're gonna use this. It doesn't matter. So right. <laughs> unless you're airbrushing. When guys are first starting out, they want to dabble in doing either customs or dioramas. You know, a lot of times. I think they get discouraged because they always want to ask what's the best to use material. And it's like, dude, go to Walmart, pick up some paint. Take your time. Yeah. Just just start out slow, you know, because it, yeah, it, it doesn't it. have to be the best. And a lot of the yeah. stuff I use, I can pick up at Walmart on in an afternoon. You know, it's nothing that's, that's outrageous. Um, it's nothing that's hard to get. Um, just regular off the shelf stuff. It doesn't have to be anything special. For 112, like for faces, I like just some of the stuff I have to use better stuff just because I don't have a great steady hand. Um, right. But 118, right. I can use pretty much anything. And like as far as like the color matching, some of the colors are going to be harder to do. So you have to get some of the cheaper paints where you have more options. Yeah. You yeah. Know, Especially if you get the, and they have just a. Yeah. If you, like, get the, if you get like the samplers, a lot of times you can just kind of dabble until you get that color mixed up pretty close with it and notice that even if the if you have two colors that are close but not quite once you put a, a wash on it or, or weather it that, that it. brown or and i usually prefer a brown for any of the washes that i do um or even even a dark brown some guys use black but i've noticed that brown seems to when you when you take pictures with it you can kind of adjust the lighting you know with it but i notice brown seems to be not quite as harsh as black will when when it's on certain background colors you know with it so like, like with yeah it, it it just it's it it looks more like dirt than it does like somebody being dipped in oil or something like that and even oil is is dark <laughs> brown I, you know so when i first started out man i had some people be like what do you jump into an oil bath i'm like yeah no. <laughs> like yeah five six years ago when i I, I went from doing like props for like 
like Power Ranger props, uh, different right. types of gaming props and stuff. And then I went into started to do like 20 inch figures and 112. And now I'm doing this. Right. I've never had more fun though. But yeah, my first stuff though was huge black, just black wash and wipe it. And it didn't even right. look good. But I also use my fingers to like make something look perfect to me. That That's like, usually what I do. Yeah. I'll, you're like I'll, use I'll... a paper towel, use a sock. I'm like, nope, that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> you, use, yeah, use whatever you have on hand. I mean, some guys, they'll use old underwear. I've seen them yeah. use little swatches. They'll cut them up in pieces. Whatever the, the material is that works for you to get those, those some smears, old, those wipes. Yeah. Old underwear. I use it for a cape. Yeah, so. it works. <laughs> yeah, I made Phasma also, by the way. I don't know if I showed you that. Oh, one. that's great. But I was oh, like, yeah, I, I love make, that. Like, yeah, I was like, that'll be fun. Why not? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, what else was I going to go over? Uh, pretty much, oh, that's a question, man. Like, why do you even use eBay? Like, why? Like, you could just have your it, own, you could just sell them on Instagram or something. Like, they I, sell I out. Like, like, I feel like eBay shouldn't get a portion of your it's your money i feel like like yeah. i feel yeah. i don't know i mean for me it was just it i mean because i i've been on ebay since like 98 when they first really kind of started okay. i remember when ebay i would go to toy shows this is back when you, they actually had still had toy shows um <laughs> this was like in the late uh, late 90s and there would be a kiosk set up in between the booths and it would be one little person behind this little tiny table and they would have a little cardboard sign that said eBay. And everybody's like, what is it? This was like the dawn of the internet, essentially, you know? Yeah. And people are like, what is eBay, you know? And they're like, no, look, we got all this. You know, we got like a thousand items currently up for sale. That, that's, they didn't have much in the, in the beginning. And, uh, and I, I kept seeing it. And I realized that, hey, a lot of these guys, they're starting to sell some of their stuff on eBay. And um, so I would gotten into it very, very uh, early. And, um, and I never really dealt with eBay that much other than just buying toys over the years. Right. And then when I yeah. started making my own, that's when I was like, I need something that's just quick and easy that I can just throw it up there and just let it, let it do all the work for me. And, um, and I mean, there's, there's better tools now that they have out there, but I mean, for me, it's just, it, I do all of this by myself. So it's just yeah. like, if I can just take a picture, throw it on there and, and done, then I'll let them handle that. And it's just a bit yeah, easier. It is. I mean, it is I, and easier. I thought about doing like an actual website sales, but I, I've got a website. I just got it so that I would, help, you know, hold the domain empiretoryworks.com, you know. But I yeah. haven't updated it in like four years. You know, I just only use um, Facebook and Instagram, and that's really about it. I think like if you try just to do well, like you said though, it's easier to have eBay because I still on eBay too, some of my custom stuff, and mm -hmm. it's easier to just say okay that's the person you don't have to handle any of the there's no communication yeah. issues it's the, very and that's, pop, pop, and that's pop. the thing yeah because sometimes I I mean, like, i'll get messages that i you know i don't know what country they're from and, and they don't say outright and so a lot of times i'm not sure what charging them is going to be you know as far as shipping because I, I don't like including shipping costs um if right. i don't have to you know so well, a lot of times on ebay i'll just do free shipping and then that you know, the, the, the cost of the item can kind of cover that $5 to be able to mail that package, you know, what the smaller, you know, pieces to get that, you know, on over there to them. Yeah. And then like, that's why I, I went from eBay, like just this year, I went over to Mercari for a couple months and made mm -hmm. $200 whole dollars. I was like, okay, I think we need to go back, yeah. but they're starting to yeah. charge me for shipping and I do free shipping also. And I'm like, why are right. they getting a cut of shipping when I'm not even charging for shipping? Right. Yeah. And most of my stuff i don't put it at a set price it bites me in the ass or it does really well depending right um but i mean as far as your prices go though like you could charge anything and people i think would pay it you know what i mean but none of your stuff is outrageous so right yeah i mean i like, try to keep it so that what it's, you get. it's reasonable and that i'm not basically killing myself in making this stuff you know where it's yeah. just like I, I i love people to have it but at the same time you know i kind of want to recoup my time you know in, yeah. in doing it you know in the skill being able to do whatever it is that i might be you know putting on there um so yeah, i, I no try to not do anything either like no one yeah, does I mean, what you do it's foam or it's cardboard it's not resin yeah. or wood it's, and i mean the foam stuff I, I get tons of inspiration from the foam builders it's just yeah. that I, I tried it maybe 20 years ago working with that foam core stuff <laughs> and it's just i didn't like the feel of it and i didn't like how you could literally just break it like or that you know 
Yeah, yeah. it looks beautiful. <laughs> I mean, the stuff is amazing, and it is just so delicate. I'm, I'm, I feel weird touching it, you know, to to get it to to look the way it, you know, I want it to. And, and you said, I, read, like, I would you rather have something it. I can play with. Play with exactly. I was going to say that's that, what you that's, said. That's, is you made yeah. it for the kids to come in, hang out with dad, and they could you know play with it yeah. without breaking or even worrying yeah. about it. If I, dad if I, wants to keep it on a shelf, it's great. If he wants to throw it on the floor and let the kids play with it, it's it's good to go. Um, we, you just can't do that with the foam stuff. I mean, it looks beautiful and it photographs amazingly well, um, but it's not something that you can leave on the floor for the kids to no. really really play <laughs> with. You know, yeah. and it, it, no. it, it's just a shame with it. Yeah. No, it's true. I, I, I think everything holds up really well. Like I said, I only have one building that I bought like secondary. And then, cause every time I go to get something, it's already sold out. Like, yeah. Like the big $250 sets and like that stuff, it's gone yeah. within an hour. Like, I don't know, man, and if I was, I'd be sitting back like, this is crazy. I can't believe like, yeah, well, I mean, I wear myself out because I mean, I'll make like maybe sometimes I'll, I'll like get in my head. All right. I'm going to make five buildings all at once. And for like a week and a half, two weeks, I'll just, 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 you know, tear through them and uh, get them made photographed and everything. And, you know, they'll sell out quickly. And then, you know, I'll have like a, st uh, you know, a, a stack of messages from 50 people. Hey, can you make the exact same thing? And it's like, dude, you got to give me like a little bit. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a machine where I'm just throwing materials in there, hitting a button, and the 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 Toytron 5000. You know, it, it, I'm I'm making these <laughs> things by hand. Give me as a, much give as me it a might bit. it might look that way because yeah. sometimes there'll yeah. be like five or six at a time. I'm just like, how does he do like that? And they all yeah. look like exactly the same, all perfect. And yeah, it took me. I did like the Happy Meals thing. I think I showed showed you some of the pictures, and yeah. I just want to do something crazy that I saw on some concept art. And, right, right. And I used some tin for that one, but I still want to do like I'm trying to incorporate wood as much as I can. And then if I do right. need to use foam, just for because I'm not great with woodwork, but I can do like right. walls. But for like the, the actual angles and stuff, I'll use foam and stuff just to right. kind of piece it in. But it's gonna be on wood that way. If the kids are in here, they could you know right. mess around and do yeah. whatever. And and that's the thing is like woodwork has has woodworking in general has always been um it, it's kind of been a dying art anyway you know because th th there's so many better materials that are coming out that are they're lighter weight they're easier to acquire you're not going to necessarily chop your fingers off trying to cut a straight line on it um yeah. but with like the woodwork that's where you know it, it doesn't always have to be like grandma furniture you know or or, or little knickknacks at the, at the craft show if you just take that material that's been used for you know thousands of years. People have been making things out of wood, and if you just try to incorporate that into something that you like, whether it's you know toys or whatever, but it doesn't have to look like wood. You know, you put enough layers of spray paint on anything, yeah. and it's going to look you know like something else. Yeah, it but doesn't. It, it, at it's going to last. You know, <laughs> that, that's the great thing about it. It's, it's it's more if you built it right, more than likely it's going to still stay standing. You know, so yeah. And, and when I first started telling people I make toys out of wood, some folks, I would get messages every once in a while, like, hey, you know, I, I'd like to get it, but I'm worried about splinters and I'm worried about the, and I'm like, no. do you get splinters from the <laughs> furniture at home? I mean, it's, you know, most people have wood items. Yeah, what do I have? I have, let me see if you remember this one. I'll grab it real quick. Yeah. So I have, this is the one that I got secondary, but. Yeah, yeah, the uh, cubicle buildings that I had made, yeah. Yeah, but no, you're not going to get a sliver. They're so sanded down. There's, yeah, and the, so I this try to smooth been them out. With, this has been to another person, to me, from <laughs> you, and it still looks brand new. Like, yeah. I don't know, they took really good care of it. <laughs> so it's going to. And that's why I, I try to weather them up so that even if they were to get dinged up by the owner, you yeah, you it's just going to add, it's going to add to it, you know, the detail of it. Yeah, I had like cable in here for a shot, like the three and three quarter right. cable with uh, uh, Baby Hope in the chest. And right. He was like giving out drinks to some of the people and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're def like there's no way you'd ever get a sliver. It almost feels like resin if people know what that feels like. Like it. Right. Like, and that's why feels... when I started doing the resin, I I kind of held off because I wasn't sure. Um, like especially like buildings that are gonna have like a dome on them. Yeah, and a lot of guys, it's easier to go to the like the craft store, even Walmart. Uh, you could buy the foam domes, 
You know, yeah. it, it's the split. They got split circles, or you can just get the whole you know round. Kids use them for uh, like planetary you know projects and stuff in school. Um, but the thing is, is that you know all it takes is one heavy thumb, and now you've got a, a dent on it. And yeah. uh, and I've made solid wood domes before. It's just that they take a long time to really carve out a block of wood into a round perfect round half dome and i've done it before um but i was like i need to do something to kind of speed this up and then i realized well i can make domes out of resin and if yep. i paint them up just right you won't really be able to tell one from the other you know with it no and chances I, are a lot of times that resin is heavier duty than the wood itself so yeah it's just as long as, as long as you make it thick enough and it's not too hollow or anything like that then it should be good to go yeah it just the structure is it's so simple and like i would rack my brain I'm like how does like how does it make sense but it looks yeah. so good you know and then like the little added features just like the smallest things like a knob here and you know just the smallest right. stuff makes a huge difference like the packs on the side and like yeah you can really get and, creative and, and when i make those like i usually just go with a blank building and I'm not sure what it's going to look like in the end. You know, I, I just, I just, I get it to certain stages and, and let it kind of tell me what can I add next to it. You know, is that, is that wall done? Does it need a little something, you know, on the detail of it? Um, does it need cabling or is it good on that side? Cause you don't, sometimes you want certain buildings to be sort of heavier in grit and grime or, or greeblies or whatever. And sometimes you want other buildings to be a little bit more bare, you know, and, yeah, and that's why I kind of did that with rock gut, is that you know some buildings are or have a curvature to them, some of them are, are harder, you know, sharper edges. Um, it, it just really kind of depends. And it, it, if you go through like any city, you'll see the same thing. There's going to be different structures, different styles. This building looks like a dump. It's got cr you know rusty uh, 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 air conditioners hanging off of it and fire escapes. But then you look at the building right beside it, and it's nice and polished and clean. And that's kind of what gives it that that bit of variety to make it look like that city has been built. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you, you, there's different owners. There's different stories for each building, even though they're right there side by side, same block. This one's got a different history than that one. Yeah, and it definitely. Yeah, I don't. I'm addicted to it. So every time a picture goes up, yeah. I'll show. I'll show Taylor, and she'll be like, "What am I even looking at?" And she'll sit there yeah. for like five minutes at one picture because. We're just trying to like see all the details and it's just, I love what you do, man. So I Thank appreciate you. it. I really Thank do. You. Um, it changed my life obviously, because I was like, I need to do something exactly like that. Like, Cause and, it's such a great that, concept, man. Like it just is what, make your own world. And that's what blew me away when I first started doing it with taking pictures and putting them like on Instagram and Facebook. Cause I've gotten to the point where I, I do a new picture every day and I've probably been doing that for the past, I, I guess, three years, four years thereabouts. And there's not a week that goes by that I don't have a handful of guys that say, thank you for inspiring me. And it feels weird because I didn't mean to. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I'm just doing it, you know, but. I've gotten that and I've been like, yeah. I feel like I'm still faking it, if that makes any sense. I'm, right, like, I'm not right. sure what I'm doing yet still. And it, people it, like, oh man, yeah. you inspired me by doing that video and showing me how to do it. I'm like, that's just how I think right. you could do it. But you could, like you said, take what I did and do like some guy reached out to me. He's like, Hey, I want to take your yeah. idea on this thing that you did. Da, da, da. Are you okay with them? Like if you can make money at it and do it, do it, man. Take, here's the recipe. Yeah. And he did it his own way, you know, still off of what I did. Right. And he like tons of people were happy because, because I don't do commission work at all anymore. I did back in the day, but it, it made it not um, creative anymore. I was doing right. what people wanted me to do. So now right. I just kind of finish the product and then I put it up for sale. Like if you and that's, want and it. that's kind of what I've gotten into now is like, yeah. it, it's, I love the idea of commissions and guys. I mean, I probably have two over 200 guys that want me to currently make something for them. But, <laughs> and you know, from firsthand, I think that you, your, your better work comes out when it's something that is just you focused on it and not some, something that somebody else is telling you, Hey, I want it like this. I want it like that. It takes. It, it all might not turn out the way. Out. Right. If you're if you're able to just run with it and do your own thing, it's going to come out far different. And, and it's the same way with like concept art. Yep. Sometimes the concept art is a better design than what they finished with. And yeah. you know, it was somebody else making that decision. Yeah, right. they had to have it, it inside it, of a 
Yeah. But it, and it could have been budgetary constraints, you know, hey, that looks amazing, but we can't make that, you know, because of, you know, it's going to cost too much to put it in the movie or the TV show or whatever. But if you just have an unadulterated, you know, just a full open path of you making whatever you want, just do it and let it go and just let everybody else view it from what you created, you know, because yeah, becomes... I, I try to steer clear from uh, commissions anymore. I just, I, I just feel better and freer making what I want to make and just let me be. And I promise you it'll look good. I think the last one I did that made me say I'm done was the quantum suits from Marvel. I did a right. bunch of like the white paint on two of the gray action figures. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can't anymore. I'm done. Like the only creativity yeah. was I made a, the quantum helmet from an Ant-Man one of the Ant-Man helmets, like I recarved right. them and like sculpted some stuff. And like, that was the only creative part. The rest was just white paint, some red, a yeah. little bit of chrome. And, but I had to do it eight times, 10 times, 12. And I was like, okay, I'm, oh, that's it. No. This is my last yeah. set. I'm done. <laughs> like that's yeah. where I finally, and I was already kind of dwindling from doing that stuff. I would redo something that I did, but I didn't really like taking out. Someone's like, I need this painted green. I'm like, I don't really do that anymore so right that's where i left it i was and there's so many guys that are are getting into the 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 trade that are yeah doing that and and they're doing a better job than what i would have done you know if it's sculpting a face (laughs) i don't even pretend that i'm i I wouldn't consider myself a great sculptor when it comes to like faces i steer clear of that stuff um even the acid rain figure that i done of myself you know on rock gut i just took bob from acid rain you know the old man with the white beard and i just literally cut off his hair and just shaved it down so it was a bald head i didn't add anything else to it it just it came out looking really good for what it was but i didn't i knew my my limitations of what i'm able to do and if somebody else wanted me to make something like that i would just tell them you need to look at this guy contact him let him take care of you he does better work than what i'll be able to do because if i'm not feeling it at that moment I'm going to do like crap work, you know, th- let this guy, he, he specializes in this stuff. Let's talk to him. Or if somebody wants me to yeah. like customize a figure, a lot of times, if I'm just focused on buildings or accessories right now, I just, I don't want to en- encroach anything else into that, that mindset, you know? Yeah, no, it, it'll definitely mess with you. Like that's, yeah. I stay clear. Yeah, I just can't do the commission stuff. And I appreciate every person who does ask me about it because oh, it, it makes me feel great, but it's just like, I, I'm sorry. Like it's, I can't right. do it. And I got, and I got three kids, like three girls. Like it's not gonna, right. you know, I can only do stuff if I have it planned out and like, like I'll write down what I'm doing for the week as far as like toys go and just try to stick within that area or, you know, put stuff in and out however it works and right. go from there. So, um, yeah, so no, you we'll, got, you got to be in that mode. You got to be in that art mode to be feeling that to, so to that's put what it out. I, I wanted to ask you that too. So do you have any art yeah. background or like, where does it all? I mean, I took art all through, you know, um, well, elementary school, middle school, high school. I went to uh, college for art. I dropped out, but, <laughs> but I still stayed with it. And, yeah. um, and eventually, you know, I was probably doing more work outside of being enrolled in any kind of art than I, you know, I, I, I was, I got asked, um, to teach kids cartooning. And I did that privately for several years. I was, it was at a private school. I was teaching kids cartooning. And um, so, I mean, I know how to draw. I just don't do it anymore, really. I, I, I remember wanting to draw as a, as a career, but then I, I I wanted to be able to play with the things I was drawing, you know, and I, and I couldn't do that. Somebody else would have to have made that what I'm busy drawing. So then that's when I, I eventually was like, oh, what if I handcrafted certain things? And then I'd say in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, that's when like a lot of the customizing stuff really started like churning around online. And I was like, whoa, there's other guys that are doing this too. You know, yeah. this, is, this is amazing. <laughs> and whoa, I see what he's done. He's done this. And, and everybody starts kind of having their own little style, you know, their own little way of doing things. And, um, and then mine just, I just kind of kept doing it. And uh, like even with Rock Gut, you know, I, I built that about eight, eight years ago, thereabouts. Like 2008 or something like thereabouts, that. Thereabouts, like, yeah. yeah. It had to have been r- around then. And I took pictures of it, but that was, I took pictures of it like maybe six, eight months, maybe a year after I'd already done the majority of it. 
because I just didn't think anybody would really think anything of it. You know, here's this 40 year old guy <laughs> you had, that you had no a, toy, idea. a giant, ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous toy. They're going to look at me like Richard Dreyfus, you know, close encounters with big, the big, you know, devil's uh, tower that I, he put in the basement that they're going to look at me as the crazy old man that did this. So some then people are, like, you know what? I don't care. Some people are afraid though to let this I'm like celebrate this. Like this this is creativity. That, that, and that's that's the shame too, is is yeah. that, that there's so many guys that hide their collection. You know, and they might have been given grief either from you know their parents, their wives, girlfriends, whatever the case may be, husbands. You know, it could be anything. Um, even their kids might raise an eyebrow, dude, you know, dad, come on, you know, you you're you're beyond that, you know? Yeah, but well, my kids no, do it every day. Like, they look yeah. at me like, I'm crazy. I'm like, you guys not come right. in. Like, they'll come in and customize. They'll play. Like, right. now it's getting to the point where I'm trying to build it, like, so they can actually have their own stuff implemented Definitely. into it. Yeah. But, yeah, no, a lot of people, like, seem to just, like, hide themselves. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's what I try to open the door. Because so many guys, like we were talking about before, um, that they said that they gave up on collecting. And then they started seeing what I was able to do with all the different types of action figures. And then they were like opening up their, their bins again and digging into them and pulling out these old toys and being like, these are more fun than I thought they were. You know, th th there's other things I can do. And that, that's where I was talking about like guys boxing themselves in like, all right, here's Star Wars, here's GI Joe, you know, here's this line. Th they, they only compartmentalize them. And they don't let them just kind of merge around, you know, and then it, it becomes something it's hard. That they're creating themselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to like, we, I think we're so lucky right now. We have so many toys that we can just pick whatever we want. We don't have to do this whole wave or that. Like we can pick right. and choose whatever we want and have fun with it. And that's yeah. what I was trying. This whole thing, like bringing people on and doing like the shows with me is so that I can show off someone else or someone who inspired me or someone, you know, someone right. who else is doing the same thing and like promote each other. Because when I first started like with any type of custom, it was always people like kept everything close to the chest. They didn't want to give their secrets. I'm just like, I'm going to do the opposite of that. And I just, yeah. this is how I do it. You know what I mean? Like, why not? I mean, even you like, have to even do like it. resin casting guys will ask me like, can you teach me how to do resin casting? And I'm like, do what I did. Get on YouTube. There's like a thousand videos on it. They yeah. teach you how to do it. You know, the, yeah. the craftsman on there. Uh, he, he's amazing, you know, and, and if you if you just get on there and look, they will do a better job teaching you how to do this stuff than I would tr taking the time to try to make a video just regurgitating the same that they get, you know, same information I got from them. Yeah. Just go directly to the source. Watch what they're doing, because this guy might do it a little bit different than this guy. And you might pick up different techniques by, by merging the two together. Yeah, like as far as like toy photography, I... Uh... I'm not a fan. Like I'm a fan of ACBA. I was in some of the groups and I didn't, I've always said the story about right. how I don't like the way they treat the younger people coming in. I saw a lot of right. talented people not want to do it, because, but besides the point, I picked up a ton yeah. of different ideas from them. So even yeah. though I'm not a part of ACBA, I still picked up little lighting techniques or, you know, little things here yes. and there. And it's just, and I, I like that. I like the, where we can do, everyone no, can I, come in and there's, enough room for everybody yeah because i mean i don't follow too much of the the superhero stuff i mean i, I love superheroes i grew up on comic books uh, i was a huge marvel kid growing up um but but I, I, the 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 superhero toys i i just i it, there's nothing wrong with them i picked up a few over the years um but i've always just kind of stuck with like the the star wars stuff or the gi joe or acid rain or whatever occasionally i will pick up the the superhero things if i could tear them apart and turn them into something else but i've always been amazed at, at what guys are able to do for the superhero photography of the toys um yeah. using panes of glass and forced perspective and things like that it's it, it's incredible and i, I always wonder like that. maybe i might be able to do something like that for something else you know so the techniques you know don't don't box yourself in look at what other people are doing and then try to take something this guy's doing and incorporate it in your world and it's like that with toy customizing you know also that's I like doing like the photography challenges and stuff. Like I'll set up with somebody like we're all gonna take this and you know hashtag right. this, and then we can right. all like, kind of celebrate that one figure. How can we like? And everyone has a different mind and how right. they can make that look cool or do their own thing. I always yeah. think that that's fun. Um, because I mean I'll I'll get so many, and I don't even know where the the, the people are coming from. You know, I'll get <laughs> I might have one good photo or one photo that I don't even think is all that great, but it, for some reason it just blows up. And yeah. 
<laughs> I will get like 200 messages at once. I'm already watching TV by that point. You know, I just, I, I just have my phone off to the I side. Notice. You know? yeah, like I noticed. Yeah. You go I on even... like social media, like once a day or once every two days for like a short period of time. Cause I saw like uh, something went up on eBay and then you answered me in a message. And I was like, I had two notifications from empire to i was like oh wait he, so he like he doesn't spend all day on social media because you're actually you know, i just creating. don't have the time I, i'd yeah. love to be able to but it's like yeah. you know f between facebook and then facebook messages and messenger <laughs> and the private stuff and the the message requests i mean you're talking and, and then like you know instagram uh instagram messages and then those requests that come in and then and, comments and, like <laughs> yeah you, you, I, like my youtube channel i don't think i've ever read anything anybody's ever sent me on there i just i, <laughs> I just haven't taken the time to look at it i'm not trying to ignore people it's just I, I don't know where it's all coming from sometimes yeah no i keep the youtube um that's where this will go and then i'll cut it and put it on instagram because they have like a 15 minute sure, yeah timeline yeah. but I use like YouTube just to keep me humble because at one time on Instagram, like all the videos were getting like 40 to a hundred thousand views. I'm like, what is going on? Wow. And then yeah. once Corona hit, it was down to like a hundred, 200. I was right. like, okay. But, like, so, <laughs> but I was like, but YouTube has always kept me humble. Cause it's like, Oh, you think that was cool? Here's 20 views in the last month. I'm like, wait, yeah. but over 20 yeah. hours on this one. Yeah. So yeah. But anyway, um, We'll wrap it up, man. Uh, so where can everyone find the owner of Rock Gut? <laughs> uh, you can find me uh, under Empire Toy Works on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Yeah, and I'll put all that stuff right down in the description. Also eBay. Great. So, and you usually yeah, put yeah. like a thing on Instagram, like, hey, these are going up. Go get them. Yeah, as, then, as soon as I post a uh, list something on eBay, I immediately let people know on Instagram and Facebook right right at that moment so that I just drop it right there. Sometimes I have like 200 people waiting like for a private message for me <laughs> to say, hey, I'm getting ready. I, I don't have the time for that. I just literally yeah. just throw it up there and just go, you know, so. I can't even imagine how crazy your social media is. <laughs> and I, you're just I like, just, I, it's I overwhelming. Just to, I just try to breeze through it, you know, and just, just take it. It's that's why, that, like, that's why I, had, I don't. I don't get so wrapped up in it. So that way I can just focus on the next little thing that I'm working on, you know, with and it, it. It shows in your work, man. Like, I want everybody to kind of discover their own path and don't, yep. don't, you know, necessarily take what I do as being like the only way. The know, be all. But it is a great example or blueprint. If you are thinking about yeah, that, th into th it. this works for me and that's what I, I do. But, yeah. um, but I, <laughs> I love seeing what other people are able to create and discover for themselves. I think, yeah. And I think, uh, I hope that 3.75 never dies. I'm going to like save it and stuff. And I don't know if you saw the three pack from uh, Hasbro this week, the Echo and Fives. Yeah, I did see them. Oh, yeah. Dude, yeah. so cool. <laughs> and then the. Yeah, and I'm um, not even like that big of like a clone. Uh, a, a cl I mean, I love the Clone Wars, but it's like I never felt the urge to collect all the different clones, you know, yeah. with it. But I think it's, it's cool the way they personalized all of them. Um, yeah, so, I mean, and, on that, I, I skipped on it. And I, I usually just kind of stick with just straight up stormtroopers, and I yep. only have like maybe a, a handful of like clone of um of the first order troopers. But I've got a few, but they're all I, I've already weathered them up, dirtied them up. But um, I mean, but yeah, like stormtroopers nine, I buy those a lot. Yeah, the eight or nine dollars that the remnant ones were in the first order, I grabbed yeah. up I think like ten at a time. I was like, I just need ten, and I'll just decide from there. Yeah, and then but um, I did um. I did do the pre-order for the Razor Crest to this of course, afternoon. Of course, yeah. that's so what has lab, right? Just, as soon as, as soon as that went la live, I knew it was going to be sitting <laughs> sitting over here, you know. So, yeah, <laughs> that thing's going to be so sweet. Yeah, I got to jump on that. Um, I it's a has lab, so I don't think they sell out, do they? That's kind uh, of like no, no. I mean, and, and they've got it. multiple tiers. So once they get like eight thousand, then another tier opens up, and then they got like I think three tiers so far that they've talked about, but they haven't unlocked what they are. I wonder if we could get that little guy, uh, what's uh, Nick Nolte? I wonder if we could get him. Oh, Quill? Yeah, I wonder Quill? if we could get yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have that, him hanging out likely, on the ship. They're, they're holding, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're holding, they're keeping the cards through the chest. So there's going to be some things that they've got planned out that they're going to do. It's going to sure hit. It. It's going to hit all the marks, uh, all the tiers. Uh, that yeah. Hit. I, just, I just checked before you um, contacted me, and I think it was already halfway uh, back already you know, That's for the, for the 6,000, I think they're up to 3,000 thereabouts. In now. a couple hours, two, three hours, yeah, I think. Pretty much an afternoon. Well, this, won't, yeah. this won't come out for like a week, but yeah, it'll, yeah, yeah it's two, three hours from when, 
<laughs> yeah, really the like other tiers will be hours. unlocked by then. By the time <laughs> yeah. this is out, the other tiers will be open. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks everyone for watching. Um, check out everything Empire Toy Works. I, I, I said it'll be down in the description. And hopefully, we'll have them on again soon. Absolutely. And be kind to one another. 